How do addictions ruin my relationship? Well, uh, this is one of those qualities, again, that we probably need to look at the purpose of addictions yeah. um, before we can properly see how they would ruin our relationships. Yeah. The majority of people believe addictions help relationships, ironically, mm. and that's because they don't understand the purpose of the addiction. If they fully understood the purpose of the addiction, they probably would be able to easily see that they're going to have a, poten a, a very strong bad effect mm. on the relationship itself when the addiction's engaged. So in this case, when you're saying that most people believe addictions are good for a relationship or even the basis of a relationship, you're meaning this, uh, this feeling that I have like, I'm with you now, so you better help me avoid this and give me these feelings and and I'm with I feel it's even more overt than that it's like you're a good person I love you because you do these things for me mm -hmm. and you love me because I do these things for you yep right and that's not love at all so the worth really the worth of the partner is based upon their ability or their desire or their willingness to meet my addictions that's mm. how I measure your worth to me yes yeah yes and as soon as I don't do that what are you going to do reject you. reject yeah. straight away yeah so re addictions have a very strong potential to harm a relationship because of this mm -hmm. most relationships have been established because of addiction most of them have been established because I believe that a person who loves me will do this list of things that I've got in my mind and in my feelings, this list of things that they would do if they loved me. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that I would do a whole heap of things if I loved you. Yeah. And you believe those things and we both accept those beliefs. And because we both accept those beliefs, we now feel attracted to each other and in fact there is an emotional attraction under those circumstances because we are both injured mm -hmm. in what I would call sympathetic ways yeah. so in other words I have an openness inside of me to believe that if a person finds me sexually attractive it means that they love me yeah. it doesn't mean anything of the sort yeah. right they could be just using me but if I have that injury I will believe they love me as soon mm -hmm. as they find me sexually attractive so all I've got to do then is feel that you find me sexually attractive and I feel you love me. Mm. Right? Vice versa is also true. You know, the woman may feel that if the man makes her feel safe and secure financially, then, and he, then he loves her, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's not true. And also, why does she need that? Like, mm. she obviously doesn't, uh, is not able to create those things for herself somehow. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she wouldn't need it. So, so really what is happening with addiction is that I have a whole heap of what I would classify as emotional holes within me. And you have a whole heap of emotional holes within you. And as long as I feel your holes and <laughs> you feel my holes, yep. our relationship is binding. Yep. But as soon as one or, one or both of us stop feeling these needs, this needy stuff that is in the other person, then the other person instantly angry, mm -hmm. instantly feels I'm not being loved now instantly feels like it's no longer a good relationship, right? Yeah. So let's just clarify a couple of things that you said uh, there. You said there is an actual connection really that's going, there's an energetic exchange. An emotional exchange. Yep, emotional exchange. Where our exchange. emotions are in sympathetic harmony. And if we contrast this with some of the previous questions where we talked about the facade and untruthfulness, where we were talking about really interacting with something that's not coming from our soul, how does this relate to addictions? Are we now well, having no, a soul-based exchange based on addiction? Well, the reality is most people are having an injured soul-based relationship based yeah. on all of the things we've mentioned so far. Okay. So that's the reality. If I've got an openness to being lied to and you want to lie to me, I'll accept your lies without yeah. question. And that is a soul-based exchange. That's a soul-based, injury-based exchange. Yeah. It's not a love-based exchange. No. We're never going to be close. We're never going to be at one with each other in that exchange because it's not based on truth. It's also not based on humility or love. Yep. It's not based on honouring the free will. So at the end of the day, it's never going to be a close relationship, but we're going to believe it's close yep. because I accept what you dish out and you accept what I dish out. Yes. Right. And every single one of these things we're mentioning today in, in this series, mm -hmm. that can, every single thing that can ruin a relationship usually begins with this codependency. So in other words, I want somebody to lie to me. 
And so I find someone who lies to me. Yeah. I want somebody to treat me like they're superior to me. So mm -hmm. I find someone who treats me like that. Yeah. I want to find someone who's inferior so I can feel better about myself. So I find somebody who... And the law of attraction is working perfectly with mm -hmm. regard to these relationships. What we're talking about here is how to get out of that and into a good relationship. Because yeah. none of that is a good relationship, no matter how much we believe it is one. Yeah. Right? And this is where we find addictions particularly. Uh, like it's, it's hard for the average person to go, if somebody's angry with me all the time, I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. right? The reality is, while there are attractions that occurred that caused the angry exchange and, the, and my acceptance of that anger, um, nobody feels good about it. But with addictions, that's different. Yeah. There is attractions that occur that make me believe that I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Facade is very similar. Yeah. It makes me believe that I feel good about it. And as a result, there, these are harder things to give up in the relationship yeah. because I believe they're good yeah. before I even look at them. Yeah. Right? Of course, I'm in total denial <laughs> and total unawareness of my true state. Yeah. But, but the reality is I believe it's good. Mm -hmm. And while I believe it's good, everything's good. <laughs> I'm happy, seemingly. Seemingly. But I'm never going to be completely happy. I'm never going to have a close relationship with another soul in that state. And I'm never going to become at one with God in yeah. that state, ever. Okay, so let's talk about why we want this so much. What is the purpose of living like this in this sort of addictive exchange all of the time? Well, we could list hundreds and hundreds of reasons, couldn't we? And we, we, and, and we don't want to go on for weeks yeah. uh, having this exchange. So, so let's mention a few basic ones, I feel, yeah. as to why we would want to do it. And that would give, give us some ideas of what's going to happen when, when it doesn't get met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so living in addiction like this, it really helps me avoid my unloving demands and my unloving expectations. It helps me avoid feeling my fears. It yes, so while I'm getting the addiction met, yep. I'm avoiding the fact that I've got a whole heap of unloving crap coming out of me. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have to face <laughs> I that. I don't even have to face it. Yep, yep. Because nobody around me is challenging it. Everyone's telling me I'm great. Yep. No one's telling me, no, this is wrong. Yep. Right? And I love it. Because nobody's telling me I'm wrong. I don't have to do anything. I just keep getting all of these unloving things. Done, which, by the way, every unloving demand I have that gets satisfied degrades my soul further. Mm -hmm. I'll arrive in the hells of the spirit world guaranteed yeah. if I feed all of my addictions. Yeah. That's a sad fact. And yet, as you mentioned, most of us call that love. When the other person yep. meets all of my addictions, I love oh, them so that's much. so nice, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, they've just assisted you your degradation into hell. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's what they've done. Yeah. Which is the reason why we generally don't feed people's addictions. Yes. Because we don't want to assist you to arrive in hell when you pass. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And why we strive so much to challenge any addiction <laughs> that we might have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Addictions also, we mentioned, help us avoid feeling our fear, but also help us to avoid feeling even the feelings that are underneath our fear, our deep emotional pains. Yes. Yes, so addictions help us cover over the true emotional state of ourselves. Mm -hmm. The problem with covering it over is that we don't experience it. If we don't experience it, we don't release it. If we don't release it, we can't grow. So, you know, obviously if we don't grow, our relationship can't grow. Yeah. So yeah. of course it's going to have a negative effect on our relationship. Yeah. The other reason we uh, live in addiction is it creates a codependence that you've talked about, which makes us feel all the, everything's warm and fuzzy and wonderful in my yes, life. Yeah. But within that, it's really forcing my partner to satisfy or take responsibility for or accept all of that unfelt pain and fear that we just mentioned. Yes. So it's actually an imposition upon their will. Mm -hmm. They have to do what you want. And if they don't, you immediately will punish them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very, very negative. You're basically manipulating your partner. Mm -hmm. Now, codependent manipulation is usually acceptable by most people. Yeah. And I'm saying that no, any form of manipulation, codependent or not, is unacceptable if you're ever going to have a good relationship with another person. Yeah. And impossible to have a good relationship with God while you have it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, 
So addictions really help me to avoid being truly loving, truthful and humble, yes. which is, as we talked about in the previous session, it's the whole basis for of a good relationship. A good relationship yeah. <laughs> so addictions help me avoid all of the things that make a good relationship yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty And I, I really <laughs> use them in that way to help me avoid actually having to do those things. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it also causes me to be in this very frenzied state of unloving behaviour. Yes, and it's the frenzied state that enables us to have our soul condition degrade. And it's the frenzied state where we do things that we don't even realise we're doing. That is a major problem with regard to addictions because we finish up going and doing things that eventually end up destroying our relationship without even thinking about them very much. Mm -hmm. You know, if you ask the average person who's cheated on their partner whether they thought much about it beforehand, the average person probably didn't because there's a frenzied state being developed and they just go ahead and do it anyway without any thought of the replications upon yeah. their relationship. And, and it's often the case with just all of the things to do with addiction, even just the addiction of wanting your partner to take responsibility for, you know, your clothes or your food or your shelter or your money or whatever. All of these addictions are covering over severe imperfections within oneself. Mm -hmm. And as we've said and quite clearly stated in previous sessions on partner relationships, if we're ever going to have a good partner relationship, we need to work on becoming perfect ourselves. Yeah. And if we're not going to do that, then obviously our relationship is, is impossible for our relationship to be perfect as well, if we're not going to become perfect at ourselves. And my feeling is the average person accepts the imperfection and accepts the facade and the addictions and because they believe that that is perfection. Yeah. You know, that it's such a lovely relationship being able to just have all of my needs and holes met. And, and it's so sad. It's like, it's like the statement, you complete me. Well, well it, <laughs> with two halves of the soul, that is strictly true. Technically true. Technically yeah. true but not emotionally true, mm -hmm. right? And I see a lot of people applying it emotionally and physically where they feel the other person completes them. When in fact, all the other person is doing is meeting every one of their unhealed emotional addictions. Yeah. And both, unfortunately, in that relationship are unable to grow. The problem with codependent addictions, which are mostly what appear in relationships, is that it's impossible for both parties in the relationship to grow unless they both see their own codependencies yeah. and the, and both see that their addictions are a sin mm -hmm. from God's can, from God's sight, mm -hmm. but also there and sin in the sense of it'll cause their relationship to degrade, not to improve. Yeah, and they need to see that. Yeah. and yet the majority of people on earth love these kind of relationships. They are. Like they are the kind of relationships where the average person believes they have the best relationship of all of their friends. And reality, what we observe, is they have the most addictive relationship mm -hmm. compared to all of their friends. Mm -hmm. The most codependently addictive relationship yeah. compared to all of their friends. So it's very, very sad to observe those kind of relationships. And the impact that those kind of relationships have on your relationship with God are severe. Mm -hmm. Because you believe in your you, you, you both agree with the addictive codependency, you do not feel there is a problem. No. And when you do not see there's a problem, you will never become at one with God because you, to become at one with God, you've got to begin to see your problems. You've got to see where your sin is preventing the flow of God's love into you. You've got to see where your choices and your will is being exercised out of harmony with receiving God's love. And, if, and, and codependent addiction is one of the major ways that our choices are being exercised out of harmony with God's love. Yeah. We will not receive God's love while we are in codependent addiction with our partner. Yeah, yeah. So very, very destructive to your relationship with God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's talk about how it, you've talked a lot really about how it ruins a relationship. Yes. But let's just talk yeah. about some of the other key points. Sure. And perhaps you can explain how these things happen. So yes. we've mentioned that addictions create a codependence. Yes. And that that's detrimental. Yes. Um, detrimental because I'm giving you what you think you need, mm -hmm. which is out of harmony with love. Yeah. 
Mm. And I, you're giving me what I think I need, which is out of harmony with love. Both of us are completely out of harmony with love, but we think it's love. So how? So we've got a hugely distorted view of love. Yeah. Right. And we will never get close to God. We'll never experience at one with God than the bliss of that condition. And we're never going to ever be at one with each other either, because while there's injuries in the soul that are out of harmony with God, there is, it's impossible for us to be out of harmony with God and at one with each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 So, um, given that just about everyone feels that the meeting, this codependence is love, and you're saying that that's completely out of harmony with love, this codependence. What does it look like then in a relationship where both parties want to love? What do they give each other? Both parties give each other love, truth, their humility mm -hmm. and their will, mm -hmm. like their will is combined to do everything. Both parties have a very developed will in the same direction when they're soulmates. Mm -hmm. and, and they're both giving to each other completely without the expectation the other person gives them anything. So there's no expectation, and instead of assisting the suppression of emotion in the partner... You're assisting the expression of emotion. Got you. All of it, including the hurt yep. and, the, and the real self. Yep. The addiction does not encourage the hurt or, nor the real self to ever be expressed. Yep. So there's a huge amount of emotional suppression going on in a relationship that's full of addiction mm -hmm. and yet seemingly happy. Yeah. Huge amount of emotional yep. suppression. Yeah very very damaging to the soul of the individual and very damaging to your long-term health and in fact the ma main cause of most diseases in a, in a relation that occur in the per in each body of the persons having the relationship cancers and everything are all very much defined mm -hmm. most some of the most serious and difficult diseases that we face on this planet are surrounding codependent addiction yeah 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 Okay. People die from it. <laughs> yeah. Like the, there's a major cause of death. Yeah. Codependent addiction. Yeah. Major cause of death. Mm. People don't realise the the relationship between their physical body's health and the unloving codependent addictions they remain in and desire to remain in. Yeah. Yeah. If people could see that it was the major cause of their physical death, they might start working through some of their issues with regard to addictions. It is a major sin. <laughs> from God's perspective and it causes major suffering and pain and disease on this planet mm, mm. Yeah. so if you, if you understood that you would certainly act differently so can we talk about then the way that addictions actually create more pain or intense pain within a relationship what how does that happen well if we're in codependent addiction um, the feeling is the more I give you what you need and the more you give me what we need, the closer we are, right? That's mm -hmm. the codependent addiction. Yeah. The problem, though, is to do that, we, our body and our spirit body must give things that the body is not designed to give. And the body must receive things that it's not designed to receive uh, as feelings and emotions that are out of harmony with love. The more disharmony there is in, in love of emotions that are flowing through my body and yours, the more potential there is for disease. Mm -hmm. So that's first. Our physical suffering is mostly caused by this codependent addiction that's occurring in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Now, most relationships finish up, particularly if they're long-term relationships, finish up having one or both parties in severe, with severe health problems as a result. Yeah. Right, so that, there's, there's the first, pain yeah. and suffering. Yeah. The second pain and suffering is that what occurs after our passing mm -hmm. the intense negative condition that we're now in because of our unloving conditions and demands yeah. means that we arrive in the spirit world in an in a in a hellish condition with surrounded by people who have exactly the same demands that we have mm -hmm. right and i've seen many people stay in that condition for thousands of years in that hellish suffering condition not willing to get out of it because of still wanting their codependent addictions met. Yep. Right? Not ever getting them met, but wanting them met. Right? Yep. Many people therefore attach themselves to other people on earth after they've passed to have these addictions met, which causes further pain and suffering to the people on earth and to their own selves mm -hmm. and completely degrades their condition even more. It is the major reason why the hells exist on this planet, you know, surrounding the planet. Yeah. And, and, and so it has a terrible effect 
on the soul of the individuals involved. It also has a very, very damaging effect on your children. The children grow up to believe what, that what you're demonstrating is what love is. And so they themselves enter the same kind of bartering relationship, believing it to be love. And they therefore have the same result imposed upon them as what you have imposed upon you. Mm -hmm. right? Then you've got what happens when your addictions are not met mm. inside of the relationship on earth. Because it's very difficult, isn't it, to continually meet, meet. another person's constant yep. demands. Yep. Yeah, very hard. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so sooner or later, one or both of you start getting angry about this. <laughs> then, of course, you have all the results of the anger and rage being expressed towards each half, which causes a lot of emotional turmoil and distress as well as a lot of physical pain that intensifies because of the growing negative emotional condition yeah. inside of oneself. Yeah. Not only that, because we are working in our addictions, we are completely emotionally insensitive. We are unable to feel what's going on in our environment. We're unable to protect ourselves. We're less secure. We're less safe. We're, we're more destructive personally to ourselves and also more destructive to other people as a result. And every destruction we create causes more mm -hmm. negative condition in our soul. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a terrible thing yeah. uh, that occurs, unfortunately. And if people could realize the extent of the damage that is caused through codependent addiction, they would never wish to engage it. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why we are so hot on it yeah. when, <laughs> uh, in our discussions with people. Yeah. Because if they realise that it is the main reason why the hells exist, because people who live in this codependent addiction need the hells to get out of a place that's so unloving by the time they arrive there, they need the hells to exist so that they can live somewhere. That's how bad it is. Yeah. So yeah, it's a terrible, terrible state to get into. And, and, and we can't say enough about trying to get out of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's also so insidious, isn't it? Because very it often is. people call it happiness or love or contentment uh, when it's sad actually when we observe it. Yeah. They're just saying, "Oh, we've got such a happy relationship and we see all these codependent addictions destroying their soul and they're all just going merrily on their way to self-destruction." Yeah. And it's just a sad thing to observe. And when you're a spirit in the spirit world observing millions and billions of people doing this, mm -hmm. it's just like a major cause of, the, of humanity's suffering. Yeah. And, and major cause, like I said, of humanity's pain, physical pain, yeah. disease and all those kinds of things that are caused through these codependent addictions by us believing that something is good when it actually is very bad, mm. very unloving. Mm -hmm. That's what the problem is. We believe it to be good, which causes us to engage the behavior, causing our self-destruction. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we, I mean, <laughs> I think you've spoken passionately <laughs> about that. Yeah. Um, we've brought up really that it's addictions are manipulative and controlling of ourselves and our partner. So yes. we're, we're kind of controlled by this compulsion. Uh, we're also attempting to manipulate our partner into meeting these things. Of course. Yeah. So we want them, we're trying to overcome their will to not meet these things. Yeah. And we want them to meet these things yeah. in order for us to be happy and therefore us yeah. to not punish them yeah. as well. We, we, we do it because, you know, we want them to meet our addictions. If they don't meet our addictions, what do we do? Mm. We Get generally angry. punish them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, that's not a love relationship. Yeah. What's that? That's yeah. like an autocratic like dictator <laughs> relationship yeah right and unfortunately we even do it to each other yeah on different issues yeah terrible yeah mm. yeah okay Ed, we actually replace any love exchange with a barter system yes bartering systems not love no, you know stop exactly. thinking that a bartering system whether it's financial or or you know um, relationship based emotional based is love because it's not yeah so our, our relationship can't really go anywhere because there's nothing really going on in terms of It's love. all dependent on me doing for you what you want and you doing for me what I want. Yeah. It's not, there's no love that forms the foundation of the relationship. As soon as a little bit of stress comes on the relationship, it's highly unlikely this relationship will survive. Yeah. Right? It only is surviving through codependent addiction. Yeah. 
as soon as a bit of stress forms, like love isn't binding it. No. I'm not wanting to give the gift of my love to you and you're not wanting to give the gift of my, your love to me without expectation in return. And while that's happening, like we haven't got a love-based relationship at all. We, we, we've got a contract. We might as well have gone out. That's the purpose of marriage, isn't it? Go out and get the piece of paper that says you're going to do a whole heap of things for me <laughs> and I'll do a whole heap of things for you and we'll be happy yeah. as a result, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and definitely if, won't occur. No, it won't occur because, as happens over time, eventually these things start to feel very oppressive. Of course. Even do. if we've got, the, if I've got the demands on you, you do what I want. Eventually, even if you're willing to do those things, I start to feel oppressed by what you want me to do. Of course, and also it's an insatiable. Yeah. Because the whole exists within yourself emotionally. It's an insatiable demand. Mm. The other person can never do enough. No, because it'll never. It's never the the way to effectively remove that hole, which is really a painful emotion, isn't it? That, that you're needs to be experienced. To. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And because the addictions are continually, um, we, we're using them to avoid these painful emotions. We can never really have emotional or sexual intimacy, can we? No. Any sexual contact we have is based on our addictions. Mm. It's just me feeding your addictions, you're, you're feeding mine. So if the addiction happens to be one of power, then I'll be submissive and you'll have power or yeah. vice versa. Yeah. If, the, if the addiction, this is sexually, you know, yeah. if the addiction is, is one of control, then you'll have control or I'll have control and you won't. Yeah. If the addiction is one of, you know, making the other person feel inferior to you, then I'll be the person who's superior in sexually, you'll be the inferior one. You know, it, it, it's just like... <laughs> It's impossible to have an equal relationship mm. and an equal sexual relationship that's strong without there being, you know, when there is all these addictions in place. So I see many people go, they say, oh, we have a wonderful sex life. And their sex life is terrible because one of them is angry and bitter and twisted and the other one just satisfies the anger, bitterness of the person mm -hmm. and does it sexually. And because of that, they're both happy. Yeah. But it's not happy. Yeah. Like it's destroying their soul. They're going to end up in such a bad condition when they arrive in the spirit world that they're just going to wonder what caused them to be there. And they won't even know because they'll believe that they did everything right and it was such a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so delusional, yeah. this state of addiction. Yeah. Just like any person who has a physical addiction, addiction is in a state of delusion. A person who's drinking too much is in a state of delusion about his life. The same goes with a drug addict. And the same goes with people who are emotionally addicted. Mm. They're in a state of delusion about their entire life mm -hmm. and, and their own condition. Mm. And because addictions are there to help suppress these emotions, and it's only through the experiencing of emotions that actual intimacy occurs, <coughs> actual closeness yep. sexually or emotionally occurs, while we're living in these addictions in our relationships all the time, we can never, we can never be close because no. the emotions aren't flowing. No, yeah. there's no hope of intimacy emotionally or sexually, mm -hmm. right? And I mean real soul to soul sexual intimacy and real soul to soul emotional intimacy. It's just going through the filters of our needy, mm. frenzied addictions. Yeah. That's all it's going through. And real sexual intimacy is only ever a reflection of emotional intimacy that already exists in a relationship, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And this is why there's huge amounts of sexual problems on the planet as well, yeah. of course, yeah. because these emotional addictions exist, which cause the sexual problems to to be expressed. It's a, it's basically reflecting, isn't it? The, the sexual condition. aspect of the relationship is always perfectly reflecting the true situation Emotional state of the relationship. Of the relationship. So yeah. as you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> if there's a very dominating person and in the relationship and a very submissive person and they're willing to meet each other in codependent addiction around that, they might have a lot of sex, but it won't be truly intimate sexual encounters. No, they'll think it's wonderful because yeah. they're meeting each other's addictions. But but the reality they've just destroyed each other's condition yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, from God's perspective, if they could see their condition being destroyed, they would probably stop the process. Although there's plenty of spirits in the spirit world who can see their own condition being destroyed and still don't stop the process. Mm. So 
It's the frenzy of addiction that causes you to think that things are good when actually they're very bad for you. Mm. You know, it's just like the addict, the drug addict, or the, or the addict to, towards drink, the alcohol, believing that those substances are good for them, mm -hmm. you know, that they're necessary for their life. It's a self-delusional state. Yeah. Yeah. But happily engaged by the individual, seemingly happily engaged. Yeah. Of course, they're never happy because it's never satisfied. Mm -mm. So if there's one way to seriously improve your relationship, it's to, to not enter addictions or to, to and deal to actively, with them. actively help and assist each other to address them. Yeah. Do the exact opposite. Instead of actively helping each other and assisting each other to remain in them, actively help each other and assist each other to see them, become aware of them, stop being in denial of them, address them. Honestly, truthfully, you know, with God's help, you'll work through these issues. But the reality is, if you don't do that, your relationship's in serious trouble and your own condition is in serious trouble too. Mm -hmm. Your own soul condition mm -hmm. is in serious trouble. Yeah. yeah. So we need to see it for the serious thing it is. And I feel that this is something that, you know, we've talked about addictions over and over again in the past. And the majority of people still do not see how seriously evil they are. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They just think they're innocent, even. Oh, it's yeah. just sad. <laughs> it is. Because it's like, you know, it is the thing that caused the hells in the first place. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the thing that causes most people from this world to end up in the hells mm. after they pass. Mm -hmm. Sad. Yeah. So that's why, you know, you'd be far better off in the relationship confronting addiction every day working through addiction, every day working through what, you know, what am I doing here? What am I doing there? So you will grow in love greatly if you just harness working, the ability to work through your addictions rather than living in codependent addictions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, excellent. Okay. Big ruin for our relationship. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Bad habits, can't help myself. <laughs> and that one's running wild. Yeah. <laughs>